so we have uh, Silverthorn, the sequel to Magician. Yep. Um, it's either the second or third book, depending on how you look at it with the... Yeah, the Silver divisions or whatever. But I would say it's the second book, because I read Magician as one thing. Yeah, same, same, yep, same, same yeah. yeah. Um, very good, very different kind of storytelling, right? Yeah, very different. Um, I felt like he had the, a very unique story with the magician where it took place on two worlds. Mm. and It's quite epic in scope. Very epic in scope. And there's multiple characters doing multiple different mm. things in different, completely different habitats, completely yeah. different um, environments. Um, yeah, different storylines too. And the, com- the complete tone of those different worlds... Mm. Um, was it was something really interesting. Whereas with Silverthorn, everything is reeled back to Crondor. Yeah. And it's um completely based in this fantasy world that is very um typical. It's very something that we we're, we're used to with like Lord of the Rings and everything else. Right. Um, I feel like the reason why we like mag- magician so much is because we got something different. Mm. And when you look at Silverthorn, he dials back to that, where yeah. he's cut off anything that's in, the, anything that we thought was interesting, and you've gone back to like the original yeah. fantasy book world. It's much, much much more focused. Yeah. Um, reduced scope. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely a reduced scope is a, yeah. is a good way of putting it. Mm. So yeah, so we. So how does it start? Um, um, Jimmy the Hand is like on a job or whatever is it Jimmy the Hand or One Hand yeah Jimmy Jimmy the Hand yeah he's a thief um he's on a job and fuck what what does happen he accidentally um foils an assassin yeah oh yeah it's like that on the rooftops yeah yeah yeah. he's trying to kill um the prince and the prince isn't going to his city yeah to be basically the regent there and get married and stuff or is he already married at this point so he like uncovers this plot to kill the prince mm. and he goes and warns him instead of talking to his um bodyguards and stuff about it yeah. right and then <clears throat> the assassin- assassination goes ahead but at the last minute he it's like kind of jimmy's fault that um what's her face gets shot because yeah. he like kicks the dude rises he fires and it misses a router yeah it misses a router the, the prince um, and gets the gets his, his wife his, his yeah. missus his, his new brand new wife yeah and uh, she gets poisoned, poisoned by yeah. and then the only thing that we can get to, to fix this poison is the silver thorn yeah I thought silver thorn was going to be like a character or something I thought it was yeah I thought it was maybe like some kind of magic sword or something right, like okay. that I didn't re- I thought like you know how you give Sting the name of a sword? Right, Or, yeah, like, yeah. you give... Yeah, I thought it might have been some kind of magic sword. It does make sense that it's a, a plant, though. It does, yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting that it was an elvish plant, too. Mm. So the whole story is basically yeah. them trying to get this... Quest to get quest the silver, to get the silver form. Yeah. And, I mean, there's a couple different... Um, there's two main groups. There's Pug and uh, Colgan and some other people... They're kind of on the back burner for like the first half. You don't really see them. Yeah. So they're trying to get. Um, well, they're going to the. The school to get more knowledge or something. Yeah, because they've created a school on uh, Macross of Black's yeah. Island. And um, there's that whole thing of that blind, um, that blind guy who can, can he see the future or can he like? Oh uh, yeah, there's a blind guy who can see the future. But he and has then, a, a seizure when it happens, right? Yeah. And the darkness, whatever, fucks him up. Yeah. And then there's that little girl who can't talk, but... Um, Can speak directly speak, to your mind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 That was interesting. I thought that was... Um, I think... I think that um, Raymond E. Fuss has definitely has some fantastic ideas. Hmm. He comes up with some very unique things. And... Um, I don't think he always knows what to do with them. Right. Like, that whole thing with the little girl was so interesting. Um, it doesn't really go with it, eh? No, it doesn't Nothing really get really used happens. in the mm. story. Yeah, I can't remember her really anything after that, eh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's that plot line, and then there's, like, a router and, like, Jimmy 
and a few other guys and they're like they go to that monk place oh yeah, yeah. and then there's that um when they get there there's like flying creatures that kind of fuck with them yeah and then they get a bit of info and then i guess that's when they get clued on to or go to the El- elvish place yep go to the elvish place and um that's like an ancient elvish um leaf or yeah or Plant, plant with it, like, plant with thorns on it. So yeah, and berries. I think it's the berries that that saves the life. Yeah. yeah, and it's in an area that's so sacred that like, um, the elvish don't even go there. Like no one goes there. Yeah, and there's like snake priests or something that are evil guys, evil right. snake priest guys who are the ones behind the whole plot. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Um, I like that he went back. Uh, they went back to um. What's the other planet? Oh, Calamon. Yeah, yeah. I quite like that, actually. Uh, I I thought it was, I did like that. I did like that. Don't get me wrong. I think it is. But when you go to all the um, trouble of saying, we've closed the portal. There's no oh, way we're yeah, getting yeah. back there. Like, oh, actually. To, actually, you know what? We're going back there. No, no issue. I already know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already know. Um, yeah, there's no risk at all. I'm sure that's not going to... Mm come back to bite them at all well it's extra way to get there yeah so um anyway we'll out of 10 and then we'll break it down a bit more yeah okay tell us and we'll tell each other about like maybe the you know, um good moments and bad moments stuff like that yeah um i give it an eight it's not i didn't enjoy it as much as magician but it's still very good um i'm probably on par with that i'd give it an eight uh right in the middle of the road there maybe Maybe a seven point five. I thought. I yeah. thought. Fantastic romp. Loved it. Cool characters. Mm. Um, language is cool. Really awesome bits. But um, like you said, when that re- with that focus reduced, mm. I felt like it was a lot. There's less to it. Yeah, yeah, less to it. And I thought it was similar to other books that I'd read. Like yeah, um, it was simplified and all that. Yeah. Um, I read the Shannara Chronicles and oh okay, just the first book. The Terry Brooks. Yeah, the Terry. Uh, yeah, I think it's Terry Brooks. Yeah. Um, and I liked it, but it was very run of the mill, mm. just run run of the mill fantasy for me. I felt like um, you could go to any bookshop, pick up a book off the shelf from any amateur author, okay, and it would like read similar. I feel like uh, like we almost touched on that with this story, but yeah, I thought okay. it was I thought it was good enough from the prior book to stand out for me yeah because you're following all these characters you kind of know and love so yeah. it's like nice to see them again um there's a huge lap of Tom- Thomas in it as well yeah like he's t- like barely in it eh? yeah like um he's there when they go first meet the elves and then he kind of saves the day at the end right yeah when they they're escaping from whatever the enemies are some of it's a bit fuzzy to be honest um dark elves or something yeah here. like they had to get to the certain point outside of the region of the yeah 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 because the dark elves and they um resurrect and stuff yeah yeah but they're yeah, definitely cool definitely cool yeah. stuff um but there are parts in the story that i thought fell for me fell flat when i was doing it i thought that I, I put I put the book down. I put the book down and I stopped yeah. doing anything, had anything to do with it because of that um, part with the assassin near the start. Yeah. Not the initial assassin, but the second assassin who couldn't die. Right. Is that the one with the scars on his face? Um, I think so. And they chop his arms and legs off and stuff and he just keeps going at it. And he like, oh, okay. He's like invulnerable. Right. And um, then just no one knows how to kill him. They stab him through the heart, everything. Yeah. And like chop him up into bits, and he kills like like ten guards on his way to, to Aruta, and, mm. and literally the only way to stop all these assassinations is to get a magical object around his neck and to pretend like he's actually oh, dead. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, actually, one thing, remember I messaged about like suddenly it felt like these characters were in this like random situation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I like because <clears throat> I had a copy of it. Uh, bought it off trade me for a couple of bucks that is actually how it happens it's just like you're thrust into the suddenly yeah it's just going happens, towards right? this island and they're being attacked and i was like oh what the fuck yeah so um yeah 
I really like uh, Jimmy though as a character. I think he has a lot of potential. He is amazing. He's great. From that like one moment we see in the magician, mm. like he's expanded yeah. himself and he's expanded himself to a really good way in, in a really good way. Um, that part where he's proving himself he's the only one thinking about like how an assassin would actually try and kill mm. the, the prince the crown prince and he climbs up into like the eaves of the castle where the where the guy's gonna assassinate him with the crossbow mm. he's yeah, like yeah. why didn't no one ever think about this why didn't That's right, the yeah. guards think about it and I thought it was cool because you do have this kid against a real assassin this real person who is actually quite a threat yeah. and as much as a reader you're rooting for absolutely rooting for Jimmy to try and mm. take him down he fails in this quest and I think yeah. that's fantastic because in a lot of um, stories it'd be too easy for Jimmy to just like knock the guy out and be like oh no but he fired the he fired the bolt anyway or whatever you know yeah. it was really it really was a struggle and like the entire fight I thought oh shit Jimmy could die in this mm. and uh, it's that um that um, moment of unsure of unsuredness about whether a character's going to die or not for me mm. is, is, is a, a really good uh, indication of whether the story is pulling along right what do you think about Pug's role being reduced like he's not the main character you know? I thought it was good that um, the focus was on the Silverthorn thing because that was yeah, all that was like what the story was even cast yeah kind of it was an even cast and Jimmy, Ruta Martin, Pug yeah I thought that we saw a lot of Martin in this one which was good as well yeah. and um, I feel like he's a character that was well developed in the first one that mm. sort of took a back seat in this as well but he, there was a bit there was a bit of him in it but um I thought it was good to see Aruta because Aruta didn't really do that much in the first one, did he? Yeah, it was just like because uh, he was defending um, some place that we didn't see or something. Yeah, well, I think he was the one in Crydy. Oh yeah, he was in Crydy. Yeah. Like there was like <clears throat> a <clears throat> there was quite a, <clears throat> a big chunk for like a few chapters. It felt like, and then it kind of and then magician then mm. it went to like other people. That's right. That's right. Um. Because he had Amon Trask with him and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, the pirate guy. Right yeah. There. yeah, so I think that those... Um, I think it's cool to, to see this character that we haven't really mm. done too much with. Yeah. And, like, he is the, the main cast member. I think that's cool. Um, what do you think about the weird stuff at the, at the end where all of a sudden Pug does become part of the, of the main cast and it's like, oh, oh no, holy crap, like... You know that guy from the first book that was the magician? Mm. That the first book was about? Oh, all of a sudden now he's like fucking one of the main characters again and we've got this like big lead up to the second book or like the third book or whatever. Um, it didn't bother me. Um, I don't, yeah. It's fine. Did it excite you about maybe reading the next book? Yes, although bec- well, this series is quite old. The whole like evil darkness thing I'm not too crazy about like it's not a quantifiable enemy as much uh, maybe, maybe I'll change my mind yeah. once I read the next one But I'm probably opposite to that I thought that the the enemy the big enemy thing I thought yeah. that that seemed quite scary in the, in the first one and it okay. felt like it was a, a real threat it did get me interested for the third book but I think it took me out of it because we had so much stuff with Aruta I think that like <laughs> This story really was about Aruta and the Silverthorn. Yeah. To tack on the other stuff was just um, Raymond Nephi saying, come on, let's get to the next book. Come yeah. on, readers. I've got more books and yeah, things. Yeah, I've got 30 more books. Yeah, 30 more <laughs> books here. Yeah. So, I think one of the books <clears throat> that um, mentions Jimmy in the title of it. For me. Yeah, one of them is actually a book about yeah. Jimmy. So I'd like to, I'd like to see where that goes. Um, there's some cool bits where Jimmy goes into the sewer. And like he, uh, he has to make his way into like a slum area, and he's in the sewers, and he has to kill some of the snake fucking guys. Okay. And it's like pitch black in there, and they've got someone to look like a rooter. Is this in this book or in Silverthorn or the next one? Sorry. Is it? 
It's because it's when they fake his death or something. Uh, they fake his death, eh? Because I remember them putting on the necklace to protect Naruto, but I don't remember. Doesn't he grow a beard and shit to like? Is that like when they're in the other towns? Yeah. Doesn't he not like, grow a beard or something? I can't remember. Oh man, I don't know. I can't remember. But there was a cool part in the cell where he killed a guy. Oh. I think. Okay. Because they were trying to, he was trying to figure out like where the snake guys are from or something. Oh. Yeah. Maybe it, maybe it might be in another book, but I don't think so. I think it was in this one. Okay. I don't know. I just, the book is cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I've got uh, so Darkness. That's the second one. Whatever it's called. The next one. No idea. Don't remember the last one. Don't, um, don't remember the name. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's in the, my cart on the Audible. Cool. Yeah, it rolls over. Um. Yeah, do you want to review that one too? Yeah, I reckon we should um, do the trilogy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so what what were the things that you hated about the book? Obviously the jump to like, oh, holy crap, we're on this island now. Well, no it, nothing I hated or anything like that, but that was like, oh, quite jarring, I guess. Um, and the reduced scope and all that does have pros and cons. Um, I mean, I do generally prefer shorter books, but I also think perhaps if this was longer he could have expanded on things like right at the beginning when Jimmy's like a squire or whatever yeah and there's this whole thing of like the older kid who's like from a no- like a traditional noble house who's like kind of trying to bully him yeah and then it's like the next scene J- Jimmy sorted it out I was like you could expand on that if it was a longer book make it more of a true. thing true 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 um that doesn't necess- necessarily mean it would be better or not but it was just like, oh, here's this problem, and now it's solved. I think that that's the one of the great strides of Jimmy because, like, he is so effective as a character that he's right. ten steps ahead. And I think it's, yeah. I think it's good that like he's he's almost like Batman in that sense, where it's like, oh no, how are they going to fix this issue? Mm-hmm. Or like, oh, they've left Jimmy behind, and then it's like, how, well, how did Jimmy get here? And oh, yeah, he... that's right. Yeah, he's supposed to be on a ship, and then he's like, hey, yeah, hey guys, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think that that's uh, one of the benefits of him. Yeah, overall, uh, very good. Um, my issues are very minor. And, yeah. I think some of the off, um, <coughs> off screen, actually, um, off screen writing, should I say, like when, when th- those things do happen with Jimmy, I think. Right. I think some of that stuff is quite good. Like um, when you do encounter Pug again. And he's got the school of magicians and stuff. Yeah. Um, it seems to be like quite fleshed out where in my imagination lots of stuff has had already happens mm. so to the point where he did get her Hoko Pepper from the other place. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like it was already like, Oh yeah, I could just live here. You know? Yeah, that's right. Like I can I would love to live here and fix mm. and stuff. One of the issues I did have with him being in the other the other world was when he got captured mm. and there were lots of magicians just as powerful as him obviously I know he's got the power of two worlds yeah um he was being tortured and then mm. he all of a sudden went to the lesser path of magic and just tapped into all this magic he yeah. didn't know I felt like that was somewhat of a stretch I felt like okay um I like Pug so I'm just going to get him out of the situation scot-free yeah. and I feel like that has happened to Pug a lot in the yeah his hand's supposed to like be um like damaged he, his but tendons were like cut out like he couldn't move his fingers and yeah. not be mentioned not, at all not be mentioned <laughs> at all yeah. and um every time something like this does happen it's like oh but remember every time he is threatened he's got magical shield protection <laughs> you know it's just it's just some yeah some uh easy thing that you can throw in there to save his dead save the day yeah I agree um there was a cool part towards the end where they were like they're running from the those um Elvis dudes who yeah. are like re- reanimating and stuff yeah. and they're like holy shit no, no, we're not gonna make it and Jimmy's bleeding he's like ah yeah. oh, you know don't worry Ruta I've pretty much saved you a lot through this entire book um 
just go, mate. You know, I'll hold them off. I'll probably die, but you go. <laughs> um, and then when Thomas comes in, fucking they start. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. I thought that was a, a climactic way to end that part of the story where it was mm. like, wow. Um, the writers of Rohan came in. Like, the, right. the final... Yeah. We're down to the wire, and now someone actually helped. Um... I guess nothing really surprised me in this. No, yeah. I mean, I think it was a good story. Yeah. I feel like it's um, probably on par with Ready Player One for me, where okay. it was a good story, great romp, didn't really have many issues with it, but like it didn't do anything outside the box, hey? Mm. Like, there were some cool ideas. Very yeah. cool ideas. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Raymond E. Feist. Silverthorn. Yeah. One. Yeah. Good one.